Today I'm going to talk to you about what can be your number one enemy as an organic apple grower. We're out here in the orchard painting the bases of our apple trees with a water-based paint. And you may wonder why we're doing this. Um, it looks kind of funny. You don't have to paint the bases of your apple trees. Honestly, you just don't have to do it. But there's a few small benefits to painting them. And number one in my book is actually being able to visualize where apple tree's main enemy has entered the trunk a little bit better. It's a beautiful, frigid morning. The mountaintops are just capped with frost and ice that runs across them. And we're out here doing a really small job this morning on these apple trees. Where's the tiny paintbrush? <laughs> you know, this enemy I've spoken of in this video, the enemy of apple trees, um, and especially organic apple producers, especially organic apple tr producers with small trees, is um, is real. It's, this is not just a vague threat. It's really here. If you're in the eastern United States and you have fruit trees, you'll probably run into this pest. This tree, not this one actually, the one that was here before in my apple tree layout, this tree was killed, completely killed, by the pest I'm talking about. And I came out one day, um, this last, well, when was it? No, it was spring, I think. And I, the tree had actually completely broken in the wind and was laying on the ground. And that's not normal. An apple tree doesn't just break in the wind. Uh, unless you have crazy high winds. And in that case, it's going to just be splintered and smashed down. So something, there's always a cause when you see an apple tree, a young apple tree that's broken down like that. Um, and in this case, it was a probably a round-headed apple tree borer. There's two types of apple tree borers. There's flat-headed and round-headed. And they're basically, as far as we're concerned, they're the same. What we're doing now is actually just pulling the, um, the weeds and stuff and grass away from the bases of these trees. The way, honestly, I should keep them. And then we're painting the trunks with this half paint half water. We're just going to give it a close inspection here and look for where borers may have entered. The inspection is probably for for organic fruit um, people is probably the number one way to combat the apple tree borers. I'm honestly late on an inspection. You should ideally do it kind of early in the spring um, and then late in the summer to into the into the fall. You can go higher if you want. But. So what these borers are, it's actually a beetle, and um, there's the round-headed borer and the flat-headed borer. Basically the same. The round-headed borer comes out a little bit later. Um, it has a little bit longer life cycle in the tree. The flat-headed borer likes to drill a little higher. It comes out a little earlier, and it is in the tree for only a year. The beetle <coughs> lands on the tree, and at the graft union, like right, usually about this high, um, they actually lay their eggs into the bark of the tree. And then um, through the summer, the larvae hatch out in the tree and they burrow under the bark <clears throat> and they can burrow to the center of the tree. And the larvae will grow over time. They'll start really small, but they can get big. I've seen them this big. And they'll, they're fat little legless larvae um, with a little brown head. They're like a cream color. And they'll bore up through your tree and like, hollow it out. You know, an older tree, they can tolerate a few borers. It may impact their health some, but trees like these, if one or two borer gets in, borers gets in them and stays in there and you don't catch it, it will kill the tree. And you'll see a tree that's sickly. It has like um, poor foliage, thin foliage, and um, do you like painting trees? Yeah. It's kind of fun. Yeah, I actually feel like she was painting it for fun. Mm-hmm. It looks like you're painting it for fun. Uh-huh. Because you're painting it. Right. I've, I've encountered these apple tree borers twice in my life. I, as I've learned more about the borer, I've realized they can actually be a huge issue. So there's, you know, there's areas where people have had like half their trees killed by borers in organic orchards. This tree, I knew what it was right away when it broke off. And I picked it up and I looked at it and it was literally looked like a pipe. 
like a, a hollow apple tree. There was a hole up through it. I dug up into it. I found the little booger and I uh, squished them. And there was only one in this tree that, that killed it as far as I could tell. All right, we got one more tree. Well, kind of two more, but one more. They say that orchards near woodlands, which is, that's us, are more vulnerable because there's just higher populations. Um, I actually just learned this today, is you can wrap your trees in screen, which I may do. And th this is what I've had many of my trees wrapped in. This is really only protection for voles, which can true your trees. What you actually need though is something that's much finer to keep the beetles from laying their eggs on the base of the tree. Painting is not an effective control method, but it can help you see where the beetles have entered. They kind of kick out this little like sawdusty red frazz, they call it, behind them. This fuzzy like bark and wood residue. And that's what you're looking for. I haven't seen any of that today. Really the only thing to do if you see where a borer has entered the tree is to take a knife, a small sharp knife, and dig out that little larva. Our last tree is just, we have to trek around the garden. We're up here above the garden, and I've got this one more tree tucked away up here. It's a little smokehouse apple. The geese are all following you, Grace. Grace is the, you know, she's their provider. And they know it, they're like, yeah, where's the food? Where's the food? Hello. Hello. Good job, Justice. That little tree up there, that smokehouse apple, it's the latest of all of our trees. I laid our trees out from the earliest harvest to the late harvest. So in the bottom, the very lowest is like a June to July. All right, we got all, how many now? 13, 14, I can't remember even how many trees I have now. When I look at these apple trees out here, I forget about them so often, but when I actually stop and think about it, it just makes me think how happy I am to be doing what we're doing out here. Even though we're not doing that much homesteading stuff, this is what I was thinking about last night. I went back and I read this kind of document I wrote. It's kind of, I don't know, it's like some core thoughts on what, why we're doing YouTube. We experience something in this lifestyle that I think is, is truly good, and that is living in creation, experiencing the productivity of creation and the beauty of creation, and and walking in, in the garden, honestly. It's like, it's like our little Eden. And I love it. And I, and I love thinking of these trees in just a few years. You know what I told you? I told you I planted the earliest ripening ones down here. So these trees here, these are the trees that in just a couple years, as long as that the round-headed tree, apple tree borers don't kill them, we'll get to come out early to mid-summer and start picking these fresh eating apples down here at the bottom. Uh, and then as the year progresses, we'll be getting these mid-summer apples and then our late storage apples. And year after year, we'll have more and more storage apples. We'll have, you know, maybe a bushel one year and maybe one year we'll have 10 bushels of apples or 20 bushels of apples. Um, and we'll put them in our root cellar. It makes me happy to think about. We're gonna bring you along as we make our lunch in the camper. We are making hamburger patties topped with kale salad. You'll see what that looks like. It's different than it sounds, but it's really good. We got our spices here. This is paprika, chipotle, sage, thyme, salt. Now we've got two packets. Go ahead and cut it right across the top. Two packets of grass-fed beef from some of our friends. We traded this for a calf. You don't let having a broken collarbone stand in your way, do you? You can get anything done. You're a special guy, you're real tough, and you're also just great to have around. Great little cook and helper. If I've learned anything about making burgers in this past year, it is to season them. I've made some great burgers recently, and it's because I added all the spices and all the salt at the beginning, mixed it into the meat. It really makes a big difference. So, yeah. I've been really enjoying making well-seasoned burgers recently.
Are you having fun? Not every meal can be perfectly healthy, but every meal we try to have a really healthy component. And in this one, that kale salad, I intended to go on the burgers. Mine is gonna have kale salad and sauerkraut on it. Anyway, it's a nice lunch. Nine. Nine out of 10. And I better sit down and eat. Too good. It's too good. You're gonna say yuck later? You just said it. What, what were you saying yuck about? About the... Sauerkraut. The sauerkraut. Mm hmm. Hey guys, we're doing a project out here in the barn I'm really excited about. We are taking down lights from a wedding that we had here years ago. I think it was three years ago. Alright, turn the little red switch on the black thing. Are we supposed to make these? Okay, that one works. And we are cannibalizing the strings that have been damaged over the years, putting them back, putting bulbs into a couple of the strings, and we're gonna put them back up in our barn so we can entertain in our barn, so we can have light out here in the evenings. This barn, when properly lit, is incredibly beautiful. And I've wanted to have this project done for a long time, I just haven't gotten to it, so I'm not sure if we'll finish it this evening. The sun set quite a while ago, it's, it's starting to get dark out here. It's actually really beautiful. But um, that's what we're working on. And I'm gonna jump back in here, take some more of these strings down, and hopefully get a couple of them up and all connected together so we can plug them in in one spot. Thanks for joining us this evening. It, this has been another great day on the homestead. Bree's been gone all day. She's been um, in Asheville taking kind of a day off, which I'm so happy she gets to do that. Um, I had my day off earlier in the week when I got put on call at work. It's not like that happens every week for either of us. But it's been really nice this week. Y'all have a great night. Thanks for joining us. <laughs> Some of that bolt. What's he upset about? Have a good night. Bye.